for Liao. Arsenal approached Liao, but January move ruled out. Football transfers understands Arsenal have approached the reps of Liao regarding a potential transfer. I think he's overrated. They don't mean I think you're a bad player. I think he's got all the tools to be a really good player, but he's so frustrating over 90 minutes. His decision-making is very frustrating, and he goes through good and bad plushes. But I think the... The, the, the ingredients are there if he wants it to be a real, real player. Apparently, this was an informal preliminary contact and not a formal offer for the AC Milan star to sound out whether or not there is interest in a potential move. Liao, however, made it clear he is fully focused on the current season and will not move in January, leaving further discussions until the summer. The Portuguese international has had an up and down campaign for AC Milan, overshadowed by his tense relationship with new boss Paolo Fonseca. Leal, of course, is regarded as one of the best wide players in European football and suitors like Arsenal will be well aware of his situation and potential opportunities it presents. Last two weeks, he's been linked with Barcelona. Leal handed Leal, uh, sorry, Milan landed, handed, Milan handed Leal a new contract in 2023 to fend off interest from England and France. So any move in 2025 would be very expensive. Unsurprisingly, then sources have played down links with Barca, which would have cropped up repeatedly in recent months. So he's going to cost a lot of money. You're talking 100 odd million quid, in my opinion. There have been reports that George Mendes, who is not the player's agent, has been given a mandate to oversee Liao's next transfer and that he's pushing for a January resolution. And he always is linked with PSG as well. However, we have been emphatically told that these claims are wider than Mark. Do we believe this? Arsenal's interest in a potential move for Liao raises questions about Martinelli's future. Arteta has shown a willingness to make bold decisions, sidelining fan favourites to strengthen his squad. Martinelli's a squad player until he gets back to where he needs to get to. Um, and your position is always subject to upgrade. Um, and we have seen before that, you know, the Ramsdale's, the, you know, Ramsdale's lost his spot before Gabriel Jesus has, and he has as well. In addition to Liao, Arsenal scouted Villarreal's Alex Buena and have expressed interest in PSG's Bradley Bacola. I'm on that. A move for the latter is unlikely, though reports of a risk between the player and Luis Enrique who have PK'd the gunner's interest. Nico Williams is still admired while... Dortmund's rising star Jamie Benon Gittins is also on the club's radar as Arteta continues to build a versatile and competitive squad. So we'll have to see exactly what's going on there, people. If we look at the athletic, what's going on there? Liao would make Arteta's head explode. Martinelli's decision making with Sterling's defensive work. Yeah, Arteta would fully go bold. Chelsea have an identical record to Arsenal as well. They have. They're in with a chance to win the title. They have three squads and can keep everyone fresh. We need a player like this, someone with individual skill under Arteta. He'll become a better player. Plus, he's better than Gabby and Trossard. Liao is 100% overrated. I watched Serie A, by the way, insane title race right now. But AC Milan stinks this season, and he's one of the reasons. Fifana is keeping them afloat. Yusuf Fifana would have been great at us, man. God, I hope Saka gets a hat-trick against United. He's well overdue one. I am. That's one of my pet peeves with Arteta last year. Now, I mean, really, it's nothing. But there was a couple of occasions like you taking off Saka when he's got a brace. We should have got Rafinha last year. Diaz on loan or Turkey, Rangers and a striker. We're not getting Rangers. He's going to sign a new deal at AC Milan. Diaz is more than welcome. Have to, at least in the league, we're going to need to be damn near flawless to stay in it. It is what it is. There you have it. Exactly. Leal is better than most left wingers in the league. Mbappe hasn't settled at Madrid. Give him the 14 shirt. Big up Nathan. Would love him, but yeah, you're 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 probably you're probably reaching with that one, man. Charlie, if Lee, if is this real Lee? Like Charlie, man. Charlie, I'm ranch. Big up the man then. Big up the man then for the raid. Shout out the man then for the raid for that one. If 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 that's that's genuine, smash the like button if you haven't. I'd, I'm crap with technology. I don't know. Is it Wass or has he actually done it? Yeah, big up Rants and, and Lee. Again, as I said, David Ornstein's been speaking, people, and, you know, they've spoken about a lot of players that are potentially interested in a lot of clubs and whatnot. So let's see. On Fury and Verts, people, um, they've said, you know, essentially, if we just skip, try and skip to the Tosh people, it's going to take a big fee to get to get him. It's going to take a big fee. And you'd imagine you'd imagine he'd be on the move anyways in the summer. But again, as I said earlier, he's linked with Madrid. He's linked with Bayern. They're going to have to put peas down. He's also linked with... Um, their names escape me now, man. Pep Guardiola's team, Manchester City. So we'll have to see in that regards. This is a bit of a weird way to do an article. Again, Trent's subject to speculation. Let's see Benjamin Sesko. Sesko was the domino at the top of the striker market last summer. Four Premier League clubs, Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool and Newcastle expressed interest. The issue, he, he never fell. The Slovenian international instead chose to remain at Leipzig to develop for another season, recognising the need to find consistency, which his form has been on the floor at the moment. 
before going to one of Europe's elite clubs. Those close to Sesko spoke on of, a, of an awareness that the Premier League would bring a different level of pressure. Time is on his side. His new contract lasts until 2029, but there's a gentleman's understanding with Leipzig that they will not stand in his way if a competitive offer comes in. His extension has improved financial terms, but remains below the salary he can expect in the Premier League, with only Man United addressing the striking position since last summer. The other interested are keeping close tabs. So, not sure, man. Starting lineup and tactical setup tomorrow. Well, we're not going to match them with a back three lineup. For me, probably give or take, not knowing what Mikel Moreno and Partey is saying, probably the same lineup you saw. I wouldn't be against Jorginho playing, but I, I do think Declan Rice, Partey, Odegaard, when you're playing a back three, you need dynamism. And we probably need to overload those half spaces specifically. If you imagine a back three, so you've got a centre half, right? You've got a left centre back, you've got a right centre back. You need to be pulled out of position, especially that half space with the wing backs and you as well. Um, I do like what Man United are doing. It, they, you know, they, they, it's still early, but you can see Amarin's blueprint. He keeps saying they can't press for 90 minutes. Ask questions. And you need to pull their central midfielders out wide as well. And we need to create overloads. That pockets of Saka, uh, Kai, and um, who's the other one? Odegaard. They, this is where the game's going to be won and lost, in my opinion. So we we'll have to see. But yeah, that's that's in relation to Sesco. Any of you having him? God, keep, you, you lot keep reminding me to close these. He's a jar. And Zubamendi, apparently multiple well-placed sources believe Zubamendi is now coming to terms with the idea of leaving Sociedad and anticipate that happening next summer. Some around the situation are less sure. They think in the end Zubamendi will change his mind and ultimately opt to stay, as we've seen before. But most recent conversations suggest things are different on this occasion and that with time for him and Real Sociedad to prepare rather than rush a decision, he will depart. Liverpool's attempts to land Zubamendi in the last window did not come to fruition, while Arsenal are also among multiple long-term admirers. Subscribe if you haven't smashed the like button if you haven't. There have been suggestions Manchester City could go for him in January to help cover the loss of Rodri, but if an exit is to materialise, it's anticipated it would more likely occur at the end of the season, people. So we'll have to see what exactly is going on there. Usually it depends on how far the player wants to push it. Zubamendi was interested in joining Liverpool, but was torn because it would have meant leaving in L'Areal in the lurch with fellow central midfielder Mikel Moreno leaving for Arsenal later that summer. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to see exactly where's that. But that's Supermendi. Nico Williams, what is being said here. Last summer, there was major interest from the Premier League, but Nico Williams' heart was set on joining Barcelona. He waited for them, and when that did not materialise, he decided to remain at Athletic Club. Now it appears Barcelona, with Rafinha and Lamine Yamal doing well, are not there for him, which increases the chances of a Premier League switch, and he's more open to that than previously mentioned, which again probably fuels the room rumours of Arsenal, Chelsea and anybody else. To be honest, unpopular, and I know I do think Nico Williams is, is, is being a bit flat, but City need wingers. Obviously, I think Salvino's good. Jeremy Doku would make me go mad, but I think there's raw materials. But surely Nico Williams, like he's not linked with City, but it, if anything, surely they need that more than Arsenal, really, in terms of why, why there is. I just wonder why he's not linked with them. But yeah, Nico Williams is going to be linked with us again. Apparently, people, apparently... Um, that are not there for him, which increases the chances of a Premier League switch, and he's more open to that than previously mentioned. There is a release clause of around 55 million euros, which equates to 46 million. Athletic will only sell if that gets activated, so the fact his contract ends in 2027 is irrelevant. Williams earns a high salary, but the clause is fairly low for a player of his level, so it is probable he will move in 2025. The bigger question is whether it will be in January or at the end of the season. He would prefer not to move in the winter market, but you never know. Either way, the likes of Arsenal, Bayern Munich, Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham Hotshot, sorry, Hotspur, are among those who hold a long-standing admiration. So, they have to see people. Apparently, Williams' affection for Bilbao means he has spoken about wanting one more year at Athletic, especially since their Sandman Stadium will host the Europa League final in May. He wants to win the club's first European trophy in their home stadium. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, that's Nico Williams. Alfonso David probably goes Madrid. Kevin De Bruyne, we're not into it. Would love Musiala, but we can forget about that. Can only sign him a football manager, which I did. He's a better footballer than Martinelli. He is. Big up Lee for the raid again. Can we replace Trossard with Matoma? If you put down the bag, you can have anything in this life, man. Smash the like, as Boston has said there, man. Indy Callow wasn't the guy, wasn't that the guy who... 
got outed as a KFC worker. I mean, them in the not IT. I'm more than happy to talk about transfer news with you lot. But for me, this is as far as it goes. Until I see people holding shirts, lying to me that I grew up watching Burkamp, Thierry Henry, Ian Wright, George Graham size, Tony Adams. That's as far as it goes, man. Because 98% of this stuff is BS. Like, it's absolutely BS. Half of these, you know, half of these guys that are linked with one club, they go sign for another one. Like, if you believe all of the media articles, Cody Gakpo was a Man United player. Where does he play now? So I'll try and take it with a pinch of salt, man. Let's see what this says about Yokerez. Yokerez will almost certainly be one of the most high-profile transfers in 2025, probably in the summer. You never know what offers may lack. One second, people. What? I've got an alert from Twitch. Apologies. One second. Hmm. Not sure what that meant, but again, anyways, let's start again. Victor Yokerez will almost certainly be one of the most high-profile transfers in 2025, probably in the summer. You never know what offers may land in January, but the firm expectation is he departs at the end of the season. He's 100 million. I think he's going to link up with Amarin at United. He's 100 million euros in brackets, 83 million release clauses, well documented, but Sporting are likely to do business for around 70 million euros. So what's that, 60-odd? Could be decent value. Strong interest is building from a host of suitors. There is heavy speculation Man United will be among them. Yokerez has a close relationship with Ruben Amarin, whose agent came out and said the only reason he kind of went to sport was for Ruben. But that doesn't guarantee he'll favour a switch to Old Trafford. I think it does. Like, I think it does because you know the manager. Obviously, Josh Rosersky is doing his thing and they've got Hoagland. But if you're Yokerez, you're significantly more developed than them. You can go and grab that spot. I do think, obviously, I think Man United could sell him a project. Arsenal could sell him a project. Chelsea still want a forward. Could go to all of them clubs there. Been linked with Barca. Don't know how far that goes. A lot of clubs, really. Does he want to try in the top Premier League division, in the top English division? I don't know. Uh, apparently, the forward has a preference on who he would like to join. Obviously, we're not going to know. Although various elements need to fall into place for it to happen. The situation is open. His camp is considering options from across Europe, including the Premier League, as they decide on the next step. So I have to see, really and truly, man. But then again, I'm, I don't think this is the case with Yokerez because the goals are one thing and, you know, people only care about striker scoring goals. But when you look at the way he plays, I do think he will score goals in the Prem, but I don't think you're going to have these crazy numbers that you've got in Portugal. But then you do look at Portuguese strikers. You've seen Carlos Vinicius, Isman Silmani, Darwin Nunes. None of them are bad players and Darwin's doing his thing at, at Liverpool. But... You wouldn't describe these guys as prolific per se. Anyways, I, I think Yokerez will be all right, man. I think his IQ is there. I don't think anyone cares about Jonathan David, but apparently he's going to be a free agent. His contract is expiring. His reps are listening to proposals. Apparently Liverpool, Spurs, Chelsea, Villa are among the sides who rate him. Juventus, Inter and Atletico Madrid also hold an admiration for him. And also it says they're Bayern Munich, but everybody's interested in everyone. Putting bids down, tying up contracts, doing all these things are very different. Girl, he was once linked with Arsenal. Apparently, Newcastle pushed for him people. They're still interested. He's got 12 months left on his deal. And I saw today he could be in hot water owing to him writing, I think, I love Jesus on the captain's, on, on the captain's band uh, for the recent games that just went. We were once upon a time linked with Joshua Kimmich. He's turning February in... in He's turning 30. He's not turning February. He's turning 30 in February. His contract is still running down. No clue what happens there. Marmosh, you've been linked with Arsenal before, to be fair. I check Frankfurt, expect Marmosh to leave in the summer when he will have two years left on his contract. They'd prefer not to lose him in Jan, but you never know what offers might land at the club. There's an anticipation he'll end up at a Champions League side. There is interest from Bayern Munich in Germany. And you've got Harry Kane, greedy. Juventus and Napoli in Italy and some of the biggest Premier League clubs are set to join the race for the Egypt International. You'd imagine Salah's probably, you know, if Liverpool need a forward, Salah, you know, get your get your fellow countrymen to move over them sides, innit? Levi Colwell, no chance you're leaving Chelsea. No chance. I don't know why that drew my attention. Belemba joined the club. Joe Bellingham's decent. Milia is finally finding his feet after leaving Monaco at Stuttgart. He'd be a good signing for somewhere, but someone. Belemba, what's going on there? He was down the pecking order at Brighton in the summer. I mean, we should have bought you when you was at Lille. He has a deal that runs until 2028. There's an anticipation he has now been eyed by top clubs, but any asking price would be significant. And there would also be question marks over whether he would want to leave Brighton at this stage. Fair. Quality player. You know, Brighton, when the time comes, you know, 50 million on Benjamin White, when Benjamin White had one season, you know, Ben White, Cucurella, Caicedo, 
there's de you know there's, there's there's definitely some names I'm missing out. We all know Brighton are real real top shotters and top hustlers where that comes. Gerald Hatto, talk to Timber please. In the summer, Ajax needed to make sales and quickly without the income of European football. The club aimed for 10 departures to make room for just three incoming players and refresh the squad. Um, everyone, everyone was on the table except Hato, the best talent to emerge from the Ajax side since Urien Timber. At 18, the centre-back was already too important. Oh, 18 years of age, that's how they're talking about your Ajax. Naturally, in this day and age, you're going to need, they need to make money. You're going to make them money. It is what it is. But looking at it on the flip side... Do you really need to leave Ajax at 18? Do you need to go now? Or can you play, develop? Develop without pressure because, you know, where you look at Saliba, Lenny Euro when he's back fit for Man United, you know, one week, your club fans and football fans, they're waxing lyrical. You're the guy, you're, you're amazing. The next week, you might make an error. You're rubbish, you're overrated. You need to do this, you need to do that. I do think English fans or Premier League fans, if they don't live in England, it is quite boring rhetoric around, and, and it's quite lazy, really, around player development and young development. And I just feel in this day and age, like even Lenny Yoro, like quality centre-back, young centre-back, but you're not the finished article. You don't, because you're rated, you don't wake up tomorrow and you're Varane. There's trials and tribulations. Look at Saliba, like there's trials and, and there's still trials and tribulations, but people expect you to just, and it's like that, and that doesn't work in life. Every master of any craft had to, had to be an apprentice, you know. As a, you know, them cyclist dons that that participate at the Olympics, they had to learn to ride a bike with with stabilizers on at some point. You know, you have to, you can't just go from A to B like that. But it's how the world works now, isn't it? Only a monster offer could have led Ajax to reconsider, but Hato's representation made it clear to potential suitors that he did not want to leave. Arsenal being long-term admirers, but their signing of fellow left-sided centre-back Califuri means any pursuit is unlikely. However, with Europe's elite clubs always after young ball-playing centre-backs, he has been linked with Madrid. Other sides will soon be circling. Apparently, one Ajax senior source said, I'm afraid that next summer we'll lose him. So there might even be talks in the background right now, as you would imagine for several people. Um, Arsenal fans, it's time for you to pick November Player of the Month. Kai Havart, Saka, Odegaard and Trossard have been nominated. For me, it's between you two. You know what? I'll give it Odegaard. I, I want to give it Saka, but I'm going to give it Odegaard because you've come back from an injury and it's like you've never left. So there's that off topic. We've been drawn against Man United if you've been living under a rock in the third round of the FA Cup, people. And Calafuri was named in Serie A team of the season, as was Man United's Josh Rizertsky. So I think that, yeah, that's everything we've got to cover here. So now we can just see what you lot are saying in the comments, man. Big up yourselves each and every time. Let's start assessing. Don't need Hato. Always time for good players. I want well, you go with Saka. I want Mitoma as a replacement for Trossard long term. I don't want him to come in and start. Mitoma, Gordon, Kudus, Rashford, Sane don't make us win any Champions League or Prem. We need the very best talents because we look like school kids. I mean, one player isn't going to do it alone. Arsenal not getting Rashford. Gordon's going to be too expensive. Would not mind Mitoma. I'm having Kudus. I love Jesus. Then Arsenal number nine. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea where we'll go in terms of transfers, ins and out. We'll see how it goes. At the end of last season, I really thought I had the idea of what the team is doing, but now not so much. I mean, the only one that knows is those that work at Arsenal, not the players, Mikel Arteta and, well, really just Mikel Arteta and those that sign off the checks to get things done in terms of outgoings and outgoings. Mitoma is good, but I don't think he makes us any better. I want a world be our tired of buying squad players. I can't see us making a lot of money unless Jesus and Gabby go. Ipswich are class, backed Moisey for not wearing the rainbow, backed Moisey for not wearing the rainbow armband. Not often clubs support the players' gestures. Wait, well, hey, you, well, hey, listen, I'm not involved because once you start having certain conversations, this is how they get rid of your YouTube channel and yeah, everyone's free to do what they want in it, political settings. I just want players that will help us win now. I think Matoma is a highly intelligent player that would be a great asset to have. What I like about Jokerez is that he shoots and goes for goals, doesn't do the link-up nonsense. A bit harsh, I think his link-up player is there. But he is a killer if, if that's what you mean. Isaac Verts, Cherky, Neves, Morello, perfect window for January in the summer. Oh, I'm not sure about that. We're not going to buy Morello from Nottingham Forest. Nico's value will only go up, which is true. Depending on how he's, he's set on playing CL, I guess, because United sure as hell aren't getting it this season. I, I've said this before, and I said this when Arsenal were, you know, in the in the pits of hell. If you're a player, yeah, and you're attracted to the Premier League, specifically the traditional top six and Spurs, so that's 
I don't know about them look down the line, lane, yeah, but that's City, with the exception of Pep, how far does that go? But that's City, that's Arsenal, that's Chelsea, that's Liverpool, that's Man United, right? If you're signing for any of these clubs, because of the competitive nature of the Prem, I genuinely think if you sign that four or five year deal, obviously you don't want it, but you have to be willing to accept that there might be a year that your team is woeful or the other teams are better and you don't get into the champs. And realistically, I might be wrong. And obviously, Champions League football plays a part in getting key players, right? But do we as fans overestimate Champions League football being able to bring players in, especially with the money in the game? Because it didn't, it ain't stopped Chelsea, it ain't stopped Man United. Fair enough, you know, it didn't really stop Arsenal signing anyone, really and truly. Liverpool have been in the champs, City have been in the champs. We get the point. So how far does it go? Is that does struggle with injuries? Arsenal should go for Marmush if Liverpool don't. I hear it. Did you see the reason behind Gabby's... Yokerez celebration, brilliant. Yokerez is being Gabby did Batman, he wasn't copying. To be honest with you, man, like I, I think it, a, a lot too much is made of stuff that's irrelevant, man. Like if you're Yokerez, you get the chance to play against Gabby and you score, make sure you mock him in it. It is, we will go for players that we can increase their value over time. We aren't going in for players with the focus of winning. Brighton tax for all their players, Matoma wouldn't be worth it. Bayern Munich don't sell players they don't want to sell. Brighton would need a lot of money to move Matoma in Jan, I agree. 100%. City need to refresh PTSD from back in the day. Let's hope they don't come in for Saka and Saliba. The more City struggle, the more they'll throw the cash for our stars. Nasri, Sagna, Adebayo days. I think them days are kind of gone. But anyone's available for the right price. Williams has been awful, bro, like 1GA this whole season. So he's having a hangover, essentially, man. What happened to Javi Simmons? I don't know. And to be fair, these articles, were, there was Javi Simmons' his name here somewhere. There it is. Sorry, sorry. Aye, aye. VAR, we can. We need to share the screen again. We forgot to talk about Javi Simmons. Apparently, on Javi Simmons, all options are available to PSG on Javi Simmons. No decision has been made regarding his future and much can change before the summer. Simmons was loaned out to RB Leipzig in the last window as head coach Luis Enrique would not assure anyone of a starting place. But a, player, uh, sorry, a coach's view can change and so can a player's. In Champions League in particular, PSG need extra quality. So from chance creation and goal scoring perspectives, he could be that person. Simmons is young and fits the new philosophy of PSG. Come the end of this season, though, he'll have two years left on his contract. There's no indication of him looking to sign a new deal, which means this is the point when PSG can maximise their return from a sale. Therefore, his value will reduce and that makes a permanent exit plausible. Some close to the situation expect this to happen and forecast a move to the Premier League or La Liga. Could he go back to Barca? There is also huge interest from Germany. Leipzig want to turn the loan into a full term switch. They lack the budget, but are trying to convince him with their story and project. Bayern Munich are said to have been willing to pay 100 million euros previously, and Dortmund are admirers as well. Arsenal, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, Liverpool and Real Madrid are seen as the most probable destinations. I mean, it's it, all the same team. We're all getting thrown with the same guys, so we can't all sign all the same players. While Man United showed some interest during the previous market. But it depends on the player. I'd love him, Arsenal, for what it's worth. And Luis Enrique who, if you read reports today, Luis Enrique might be losing the dressing room. If the coach 